first map so there is going to be the opportunity for them to lock it off here and they start off on defense yeah once again I mentioned it before as well. Are they going to be able to lock down Shaiko like they did before? And is Citizen going to be able to have the same impact that he had over the previous map? If so, surely there's a recipe for success here available to them. Is it Ben at Habana first, of course, with the fact that hatches are quite important? It is going to be BDS up next. So, Bank is a map that it plays. It plays very well to BDS. It's obviously a place of great strength for them, but so is Zorigan. And this is one where G2 have decided that they want to bring the fight here. It was putting it on the desk, and it's something that we highlighted a little bit earlier, is when BDS are sort of matched, sometimes it's because they can become predictable. Sometimes yeah. it's because we sort of know what they're going to do, and they still try and run it. And yeah, obviously, in the early part of next year, they've got SI to worry about. G2 technically don't. There's still an opportunity for them to get there, but it's mm -hmm. one opportunity, and it's in two days. So it's not, you know, there's it's gonna, yeah. a little bit on the mind. There, there's definitely some pressure on the side of G2 if they want to make it to the SI. If they don't, though, they can focus fully on the Grand Finals here for the European League. Now, what we did see is a Thatcher ban, a Hibana ban, but no Cade ban. And that means that those hatches are more than likely to be protected quite well. However, uh, for those of you who are wondering, oh no, there, there is the Hibana, but how are they going to open up the hatches now? Um, there is going to be operators that do have, as the Americans call it, the can openers. You love that. I, I'm you love gonna, I'm that. I'm going to take it along. It was obviously, we got the wonderful experience of working with some of the NA team yep. in Sweden recently. And they gave you the can opener. They gave the can opener, and they have two of them here. I think they're on zero. I think they're on Rafael. I know they're on Rafael. That's just <laughs> There's no other operator that can breathe in there. Yeah. Um, but it, it basically, it's a... Okay, so you might be wondering, why don't you bring Ace if you want to open hatches? Because that's because it can only open up one and a half hatch. Whereas if you bring an operator that has two of the Harbridge gadgets, you can open up two of those hatches and do that with a zero. And you still have uh, four SAM cams available to you as well for information gathering. So real good operator uh, in that sense. So, starting on the top floor and starting on a G2 defense again. And obviously, this was BDS's choice of whether they wanted to be attack or defend. They've opted for the attack on their opener. So, I'm curious to see if that's something where they think that they can apply some pressure here. Because, to be fair, yeah, it is something that they can do very, very well. But at the same time, maybe they're trying to weaken what G2's better half is. Maybe they're trying to put a little bit of caution. And obviously, we were so close to RT in the previous game that they'll be well aware of that. The Sam Cam gets all the eyes from the sky just under the hatch as they start to call the bodies that are playing around onto the top of the elevator just on the swing of the spiral stairs. It is a big pressure point and something you usually throw a couple of grenades in to clear it out. A lot of information being gathered here directly on the site, but what BDS realizes here is that there is a lot of angles leading into the site that they need to worry about. That castle barricade, that needs to go. That potentially will be a grenade that gets used for it, uh, just to make sure that they have the opportunity to challenge into that B site, because that is where all those long angles originate from, uh, with, of course, the castle barricades being out there. Not quite sure if, okay, Rafael wants to get up high a little bit, breaks the glass as a result and just decides to drop off because he was hurt at that point. You don't want to risk your life up there. That's it. Obviously, Yonka wasn't far away. Kayak was there too, and they actually thought that might have come from the other side. You can't quite get the angle that you used to be able to with that new hefty barricade around the opposite side, the southern side of that. But in the meantime, look at this. The Prisma, they've been able to try and find their way in via the fake Iana onto the back of stock. They've got the call that Virtue is around there, slightly injured, but they haven't quite been able to find their way through. Shaiko is playing this game that we saw him in the early game of Oregon do, which is hold off on the opposite side and wait for the pressure to come through as a little bit of explosives start to pop off. We've still not been able to see BDS actually truly catch somebody, though there's the first citizen, blown off banana. A lot of uh, players here on the repel on the side of BDS. They need to be careful. Three of them here. Bride, the first one to enter, will be opening up for a potential plant as well. That will be the wall that goes up. And now there is almost no one inside of the actual position here for G2 to stop this from happening. Especially not with Lambs on the back line here with the LMG really raining down a lot of bullets. 
That's it. Shaco's still trying to get the read on the intel here, but with that opening and now with the control on the windows, they have been able to shepherd themselves that little spot of clarity. Hungry is going to try their best to buy some time, and that's going to be the next point that BDS have to try and lock down on because that swing towards the default it's plant huge. is the danger. Yonker sprays through. Can't quite get the full connection, but does drop them down with Kayak picking up the revenge himself. Virtue dropped on the swing. There's a little bit more, but look at the diffuser. Look at where it is and where it's isolated. BDS, 20 seconds. They've got to see if they can recollect that. And and actually throw themselves into the site, but Hungry is still buying time. Lems finds it and goes and sticks inside the smoke itself. One more, they're not entirely sure where the plant is going oh, down, and Lems is he gonna get it stuck? He just does, and wasn't actually taking damage from that fresh smoke. The shotgun swings around the corner, does a huge bout of damage as the spray comes onto Janitors, it's just Hungry left. In a two versus one, 30 seconds, and there's one on the windows and one just around here on the square swing. The ping in the wrong place, unfortunately, and BDS just find that round. That smoke got stuck on the wall, so it didn't even reach the planter. Instead, smoked off Janitor itself. Juncker played a crucial role there, by the way, in the lobby, just trying to waste as much time as possible as there was still two players up on that rappel. If he successfully stayed there, maybe just a little bit longer, and if that smoke uh, canister did come through to do hurt Lems a little bit more, that could have been the round for G2. But BDS take the first, and Locker CCTV is up next. Up to the basement we go, and as the Vigil gets six picked out for Arcade, might not be well aware on the side of BDS that we're heading towards that basement. All right, BDS, you found an opener and you found the first attack. And to be fair, on Oregon, we sort of saw you struggle at the opener of the game and started to pick it up towards the middle before it went away from you. That difference of one, two rounds that you might be able to take a little bit earlier could be the difference of you being able to take this second map again. It's only one round deep and G2 were close. It was scrappy. That smoke canister went through. It might have been a very different result if it had been able to actually catch a lens able to stick the planter. Sometimes these things happen in your favor and there it was for the French. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, the smoke canister didn't quite go through. The information wasn't up to date. They did not know exactly where Lems was at that moment in time, just that the plant was going through. Unfortunately, it stuck on the wall for G2. Now, nothing's lost yet. Just a singular round. There is still 11 more to play in regulation. Unless, of course, BDS reaches that seven quicker than expected. G2 have no reason to panic yet. They did manage to get that very first map. I think that is already considered something very strong for them. But Alem's picking up the kill onto Junker right here is not going to be very helpful for G2. There it is, and I think Alem has punished a player that was a bit out of position there and almost gets a second, but Kayak with a sliver of health at least finds that response. And that was such a quick drive. They saw the player was still reinforcing above, just above green, and Alems just took initiative, went for the push, found the kill, and then tried to find a second afterwards. It was a direct line, which we didn't see BDS able to rock too much on Oregon. And here, that energy, that performance, and that power is something that has hit the boards running. Okay, the trade-off is now you've lost the Zafia, but with how low Kayak is, and with the chance of being picked up by a whole manner of potential spray through on shaky angles here, it's a dangerous bout that now they've got to be aware of. Only two hatches that will be gifted to BDS are the elevator and the vault hatch. Both will be opened up. Rafal uses one piece of that utility, so does Bree Day. So there's always a bit of redundancy left, of course. The other two have been electrified, and that means that BDS need to get rid of those electro class first. It will be quite difficult to do so, though. There is no soft flooring there where you can get a SAM camp through, and that means that you probably will have to settle for a push from the vault. So BDS, now you're in a bit of a body balance and you've lost that opening, you've lost the potential driver of the Zephyr and to be fair that might make this take onto the top of blue a little bit tougher but it seems like they're not really paying much attention to it. They're going to cut themselves round on the new route opened up with the slight revamp and rework the map had and these SAM cams, well that one doesn't but that one does, might be able to get a bit of the read on where that maestro is. No, drop before it gets any further, the pings they come through, slap him. they have him but they don't know how low he is and that's the thing right now. Drones are coming through, Rafal aware and pinging the position of that maestro. And then Citizen gets another kill, a grenade potentially might be tossed in here from Renshiro's side. They have two available to them, but instead go for the peak and now they're lost. It's Virtue that picks up one and goes for a second and somehow lends that one as well. It's only up to Bride now in the elevator, but he will be shut down. Citizen with another kill as well. G2, they managed to lock off 
this locker side. Well, it was a build from a bit of a slower BDS there. Obviously, the pace that was applied at the beginning by LMs couldn't quite have anybody else to go for a little bit more of a refrain. They slowed themselves down. They went for the hatches. They ignored blue, which, to be fair, yeah. when you've lost the sphere in that situation and you've done that much damage to the backside of the site, yeah, you may as well, because potentially those players, the ones that you found around the top of green, are the ones that are supposed to be reinforcing those angles and holding off on that stair set. Here, though, they couldn't quite get the lockdown on the Maestro. They spent a lot of time getting the intel, getting the information. Obviously, they don't know how low he was, but, you know, you're looking at the sledge coming around. I'm not entirely sure if they still had frags in pocket. They had two in pocket. One of those rolled out towards where saying. he was. Just, they still had roll one that way. 40 seconds. And that, that's how I was so confused when they dropped and decided to go for the swing instead rather than trying to at least isolate one of the players with a frag grenade. But hindsight is 20, 20. Um, and we do see a very similar setup coming out from G2 yet once again, which will mean that the Castle Barricade needs to stick this time. The one on your left, top of the screen now, middle. Um, that one is very important because that allows players like Kayak, like Citizen, to be active around the B bomb side, use those lines of sight that have been created. Uh, to their advantage. So a breach from Brie Day is not going to be unpunished yet once again. As soon as you do lose that castle barricade, suddenly a long line of sight is being cut off and you need to be taking these fights from even further away. And my question is, did it have anything in position to stop that from happening? Is there ADSs, something like that, right next to that barricade? So Sid is unable to find a couple of frags that time round. And obviously it was a removal in the first round, so... As I said, the eyes on him being the consistent driving force that he was before. 23 kills, 0.4 KD or a 0.5 KD in the opening map, or a 5 point KD even, not a 0.5. It was a phenomenal performance, and it's one that they needed because even with that performance, it was still a close game. Yeah. And here, you've got to open up strong. It's your defense. It's when you've got your drive and you lost your opener here. If you can double back down and get some revenge on the side itself, well, that spells good. Using the Sam Cowns here to spot if there's any ADS or something else trying to stop that wall from being opened up. The carousel, uh, castle panel, I mean. Now, that will be uh, successful. They managed to get the Sam Cam through. They know it's now clear or have taken care of the utility that was out there. And as drones are spotting a lot of the utility, a lot of the rotations as well right here for BDS. Just setting themselves up to go for another execute. Shaco dug in the corner, and we saw them doing this drive once before, but this time there's nobody currently behind that shield. It was Junker, I believe, playing a bit of a power position here and making sure they couldn't quite get the swing onto the janitor's side, and at the minute he's still a little bit further away. He can stretch that position, and he's slowly snaking his way back around to try and spray some of the pressure and aggression here as a drone drifts on by. Alem's underneath, though. He's going to try and put some pressure onto janitors, maybe see if they can catch out Hungry. They've got themselves a route through, and they obviously still have three frag grenades. We didn't see them used before, and that was a bit of a criticism. They have the chance now to see if they can really strike some of this backline defense. Castle Barricade, in the meantime, has been opened up as well. That means that the B-bomb side is suddenly not as safe anymore as it might have been before for G2. As a minute is left on the clock, they are on BDS's side, preparing themselves for an execute. They just need to get Brie Day in deep. As soon as they successfully do so, they can go for the plant, and as the exothermix continue to go off, uh, or rather the Selmas in the breaching uh, charges, they're setting themselves up real good here to try and deny them for uh, the eventual round. Well, the spray on the plant is a bit of a giveaway, and the canister starts to pop off, and Shaiko finds Virtue. He wanted to slip out of there. I don't think he wanted to get isolated inside stock, but now with another body behind that shield, it puts the grenade round to just remove that utility. There's a bit of a shake there against Yonka, who's going to move himself a bit closer, but as Bride tries to stick the diffuser, Hungry actually is able to connect the Snoke this time. It should get stuck down, and Bride gets shut down by Hungry on the swing, but it's steel destruction coming from underneath. It's sprayed all over the side. There's bodies on the windows in the back line as Renshiro gets one more from the window play that he was once famous for. Hungry with a hell of a take on an SMG. Cannot quite get the connection with the two remaining players outside, and it's very tricky because you can't get to too aggressive here. Going to see if they can at least smoke off one of the players, go for a bit of a movement and see if they can get a long arm here just on the corner. Can they get the connection? They're able to find the first ping and goes for the take on the first player. Swung out, but Renshiro for his fourth. Gets it. Wanted to quickly swing back and go for the plant and the defuse afterwards, but unable to do so. It was a valiant effort though from Hungry. 
But again, they managed to get that plant in. There seems to be no punish for it. And that is the true problem there for G2 on that site. Now, they've lost it twice. They've won the basement once, but that was just a single round ago. And that means they're forced to go to... Uh, to a different one. And staff room open area seems to be the site they want to go for here. Which is, of course, on that first floor. Now, verticality does often come in. The hatches are important to keep closed. As long as you keep control of the kitchen, however. That is going to be a key point for the site of G2. And, you know, they bring that castle. I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to be castling it off yet once more. But the issue is currently that the castle barricades that are crucial to their setup are being taken out so easily by the side of BDS, which just leaves them without that lifeline that they had. Third time's the charm, Kayak. Able to get that open now, and they've given themselves the stretch. And the risk here on this site is open is open. Sure, it's a meta that plays well into that, and it's a meta that gives you that stretch, but we've seen generally from the G2 defenses that they've preferred to have a little bit more solidity and have their players in the tricky situation rather than these massive angles that are played off and lock. They quite like their fights to be close quarters, and that reflects in a lot of their setups and how they play. Against BDS, it makes sense because BDS are fantastic at holding their angles, keeping these locked off. We saw it in that round, sure. Yeah. Four kills to the window player, but the one that Shaiko got through a plant and a couple of alleyways is the sort of take BDS loves to do. And open, it's a dangerous one to come to against a team like that. It definitely will be. But they have to keep focus on what is important here for G2. They cannot afford to lose that control as early on as they have before. Especially on that top floor. Now, Junker will be on a bit of a roam. We'll be up on that top floor together with Kayak. They are trying to hold off as much as they can together. If you manage to waste a minute, maybe two, that will already be very beneficial. But you gotta be careful because Rinchiro is ready on those windows to just start swinging in. Virtue is underneath. The Pulse is in a power position here, and they obviously have a big Intel drive for the Echo drones as well, making their way onto lobby. It's a lot of spaces and pillars for them to hide behind and just call anybody that makes a very slow approach against a very big open space. Renshiro puts some pressure onto Yonka, who's just going to pull a little bit further back, knows... Well, they don't quite have his number, but they're definitely in the right set of numbers, and they're going to spray through until they try and find a connection here. It's pot luck, and they almost got a little bit luckier than I think Yonka wanted them to. The player is still in the top of the elevator hatch, but takes the drop before the pressure comes on too much, and Renshiro is actually the first to suffer. The pulse, you assume, called that play, and there is Virtue spraying through and doesn't quite get the Iana. Shaiko able to take that fight without a sliver of damage against him. Yeah. Shaiko was about to repel in as well, I believe. So uh, very lucky that he didn't get picked up by that C4 as well. Renshiro is going to be uh, brought back up. So allowed to do his job now with the sledgehammer to start opening up and won't have to worry as much about potential C4s to be tossed out up to his position. Is it the verticality here will really come into favor for the side of BDS, but it's not going to be the actual site because they need to head towards the open area. It's not Tellers and Archives like they are opening up above right now. As Junker tries to rotate back, he does get spotted. The sound of the beepers gives him away as well. 40 seconds left on the clock. There's not much time for BDS. Well, Alems is going to see if he can drive his way through. They had the drone pushing Junker into a more uncomfortable situation, and he's had to drop even further and further down. And they obviously still have the players on top of square as well, but here, stacked up, and that wall starts to fall. Alems has a bit of a clear sight onto a site itself with Rafal trying to get a bit of a split push here onto that little box office just so they can get that connection towards that default plant. But it's going to have to be a bit of a cautious press here. 15 seconds, and Alems swings through, gets dropped down. Citizen is the door that they meet 10 seconds and the pings are still coming through. The drop comes on the hatch. The diffuser drops too and they've just got to be able to make sure they can't go get the connection with the floor and they stick it through. Hungry locks it off and BDS can't quite find the finish. Junker important there in the end as well. Coming back up the blue stairs just to well distract the last two remaining players of BDS who could instantly try and pick up that diffuser. Even managed to pick up a single kill as a result of that. So two to two currently. And we're heading back towards the basement. Lockers and CCTV has been unlocked and will be picked up yet once again by G2. It's just a worry for them that even if they win this, they will probably be forced to go back up to that top floor again where their hold with the castle doesn't really seem to be working out that well. Considering that Bree Day is just allowed to go for the plants time and time again without any of the utility really hitting hard. 
Okay, no cake this time. That's interesting. That means that all the hatches can be opened up. That's it. It's no cake. The player, the Thunderbird as well, and no Maestro is another change here. The castle instead going to be a yeah. little bit more of potentially trying to slow them down and draw a slightly different angle of fight. And to be fair, we saw the push towards the hatches, but we also saw a hefty setup around blue, and that went down quite quickly in terms of they just ignored it. They put the push entirely somewhere else because of the pace that happened onto yeah. green, because of the call that went over onto the gold hatch and onto the bank vault hatch itself. It was suddenly a very different story that G2 had to try and defend against, and they were a little bit helped by the fact that BDS couldn't quite connect the dots they needed to onto the site itself. And here, I'm curious to see if this lineup that G2's bringing is more of a response to what they expect BDS to deliver. Okay, so what's currently going on is that the castle barricades are being placed in a way so G2 has the opportunity to roam. You also see into tellers, there's been an impact hole that will allow them to rotate from the big stairs into tellers. So I believe Citizen is just going to be playing active on the roam here. Nitro Cell pre-placed by Junka as well for the windows up in CEO. And as everything is being locked off, it is truly just a big setup for Citizen to roam around these hatches to protect the open area, to protect tellers and archives. And one of the hatches has been remained soft, so I assume that Kayak can just open that one up on demand if the pressure gets too big. Alems, once again, quick to see if he can get some intel on somebody setting up, finds it, but is in a position to bite back the pulse underneath. They're trying to see if they can catch Ranchero on the way in, but there's only a certain amount of time they can survive here, and the intel is going to come closer and closer. The pre-place, ready and waiting. As soon as that call comes through, they have some protection and have some cover, and there's obviously still other players on the roam as well, not too far away. Kayak has a hatch as an escape. They have a little bit of a route through, and... There it is, Ranchiro takes an alternate way in. The call comes through, but Shaiko is making sure they can't quite get the cover there. Kayak suffers. Alems has finally found the fight that he wanted quite early on, and they're all built up right now. And as I said, they ignored blue before, and now they've sort of realized it's a bit open, so they're going to see if they can spread their wings through it. Yonkers trying to offer some cover. Citizen finds Bride in the meantime with Kayak down on the floor. It's Citizen for one more. Alems covered, and there's suddenly a fight with Yonker on the backside of open. Going to see if he can creep a little bit closer, and they've been able to actually find Kayak back up and the spray's coming from multi-direction they said well if you're gonna try and take blue we're gonna retake open and there it is a trade once again comes through yonka locks it off and now suddenly the diffuse is on the other side and Renshiro is sat a little bit waiting on the flank here on open and every single member i believe a g2 has dropped down towards that basement they know there's only two members left the bds they need to get that diffuser first and there's a minute left on the clock let them clear it out let them waste that time trying to find any potential roamers still out there now one of those drones does get spotted. Rinchiro goes on the hunt as he descends these main stairs, but surely will be spotted very soon. It's the Pels that is well aware. He gets the kill, but traded as well immediately right after. And he leaves it only to Rafal out here to try and win this basement attack. 50 seconds, three versus one, and his boots hit the ground quite heavily. The first fight, he can't quite get the full connection that he wants. Citizen knows he doesn't have to overextend. He's just going to wait and play against the audio and just pulls back into the gold vault, and now he's going to see if he can go maybe for a little bit more of a solid stick. There's a head, there's a citizen kill, and there is a G2 round. Very interesting roam setup we saw there, just using the open area, using the tellers and the archives, really as your own fortress. He used those castle barricades to block the lines aside. They need to get close to open those up without a breaching charge or with the sledgehammer. And otherwise they have to use the impact of the Zofia as well. And you only have two of those. So uh, you're not going to be able to open up all four as a result. Really brought the fight to BDS there. They needed to fight for that first floor control. But as they lost most of those gunfights, I mean, that's what it came through at the end. It wasn't necessarily like um, outplaying or trying to outplay G2 with, with going from above or, or going for pinches. No, they just all try to push through the kitchen because they expected one, maybe two players to be there, not three, um, which is what caught them off guard there. And as soon as they had that advantage, they just dropped the one hatch that was still left, left soft, so they could go back to site. G2 might be angling themselves for another 4-2 split here. And obviously it still came down a little bit to the wire before in terms of the 7-5, but... Still, it's a pace, and it's a pace that they're wanting to keep, not only against a tough opponent on a good map for them, but on their map. The map that they wanted to bring this fight to, and the place that they wanted to sort of assert themselves and say, no, we think we can take this, regardless of how the first map goes. So far, 
it's okay. I'm not going to go as far as to say it's great because there's still these scrappier moments and it's not quite as electric as some of their lockdowns in Oregon. Yeah. But still, one of the best things that we're seeing so far is multiple G2 players showing up. It's not just Citizen who's able to keep finding these fights. Obviously, Hungary, who was a little bit quiet in the first map, has been able to start flying this flag quite well. And Yonker as well is another player who didn't quite have the same connection with the intel that's being built here from Virtue and Kayak. It's a much tighter G2 performance. It definitely is. G2 is uh, is playing quite well to get it here, and as they have decided that the top floor is not going to be it, it's Virtue below. Again, with that pulse, trying to catch off one of those BDS members that just swings into the CEO office, and it's likely to be Renshiro. As Kayak actually close around the corner, I think he's going to go for a jump out here. Yeah, that's the drone. That is the spot as well. He's not going to go for it now at least. Tries to survive for a little bit longer, but he's in a position where he could go for it but he needs to be very careful to not be picked up from someone else. There is the cover from Rafal. That's it, and both of them were waiting for it. They expected it at that point. I think, I mean, he saw the drone come through. He hoped it wouldn't catch him. That's why he didn't shoot it as yeah. soon as it was on the windowsill, but obviously check your corners, they did. And that has netted them a kill. He took a risk at that point, and unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. BDS had the player, had the cover, and that's why he also jumped as well. If you're wondering why he didn't wait and try and bet it on, BDS would close down. They were well aware of that, and he hoped that he could instead take the one versus one firefight on the player. Didn't know that there was a second still in a position to be holding that firm and steady. Put Citizen in a bit of a trickier situation here above as he's just on the back stairs. He obviously has a rotate out if he wants to take it. And there's still a lot of work for BDS to do and they're going to start doing it on multiple different sides. A couple of bodies on the top of Square and a couple of bodies around Lobby, but they're still just fishing for Inter. The Yokai drones that come through. Shaiko takes a small amount of damage there. I'm not quite sure if the Yokai did get taken care of. If it might have actually is... Uh, there you go, Virtue does get down from the big stairs. Slams that picks up that kill with a big LMG. It's going to be the pulse of the board. No more guiding those C4s towards a potential target. And it's now a two-minute advantage here for BDS, which they are looking to expand upon. So I'm sure, of course, opening up even more, trying to create some rotations as well on that top floor because they know how important, how strong the verticality is on this map. They heard a drone around in that close corner, and they're going to see if they can maybe drop it, but they don't quite have the solidity. They're still aware that Hungary's inside the site itself. He's moving and manipulating. He goes on a drone in a very tricky, tight situation, and Lems isn't gifted with a freebie, but Yonka. is getting a bit of revenge there. Yonka had to spray through, tried to save Hungary, who was maybe moving a drone at that point, but accidentally cost him his life, so makes up for it with one more take against Shaiko. But that means Citizen's got to try and dig their way back through onto site. They still have some of the verticalities, and they're hoping that the swing starts to come through jumping out of the side 10 seconds and the cool's going to come through sooner rather than later if he can just get a sliver of a body here if he can find that planter that is the big take they have a watch they have a bit of a beat there and Renshiro has one more but they're not on the default plant and that is a big moment that has slipped unfortunately away from them and BDS they pull themselves even had no ID there were no holes there were no rotations to be watching from and BDS indeed they pull it even and they're heading over to the defense themselves now. It's G2 on their attack. It's considered their weak point. Three, they do not have that two round advantage they had before. And thus will need to make sure that if they lock this off with a 2-0, they need to start this half of explosive. All right, BDS. Four rounds away from finding yourself into the third map or finding yourself into the third place potential. It's still a bit of work left to do ahead, and G2 have definitely shown a little bit more fight than I think people expected. As I said, especially some of the other players that haven't quite had that first showing in the first map, now's their time to drive home the point that they've definitely shown up. Unfortunately, it's been a little bit of a sadder story on the side of BDS. Rafal's first couple of kills came in that most recent round when they needed them. Up to that point, Breda and Rafal were both sitting on nothing. So it's their time to see if they can actually try and apply themselves into this and try and drive some of these rounds a little bit more into the favor of the red, white, and blue, but the French version. Shaco wanted to go for a spawn peak there, but spotted out the drone and knew that it was not going to be that viable. Probably were already long aware as he rotates all the way down now to that first floor. That means that the second floor seems to be surrendered, I think, by everybody on BDS. No one's out there anymore, so some uh, free play here by G2. They can start working on some verticals, especially to shut down the Archives and Teller's positions. 
Ooh, waiting for a catch and hoping somebody would drift by. Shaiko is still around the top. He's found his way back up and he's going to play with those lines that are absolute nightmares because when those hatches are open, you can't entirely tell roughly where they are, but you sure can if that happens. The spray comes through and Citizen locks it off as the buck terrorizes the wall just on the split of the CEO side. And there's that opener, but look at this angle. Alem is waiting around the elevator shaft and he goes unchecked. He might be able to find a strike, looks away at the worst possible moment and Citizen is able to secure once again another kill, another double for his day. And now with a very quick bout, G2's been able to try and take some of this vertical pressure. They've still got a lot of work left to do. And that's always the thing is this opening minute and a half from them across the day on their attacks has been good. But there's a lot of work left. They would have watched that angle for just a little bit longer. They might have been able to pick up Rafal here, who is now trying to go for the challenge and will get a kill. Finds Virtue. That is the bug gone. So neither is not going to be as much verticality anymore. And it's going to be a second. No, it's Rafal that gets picked up instead. Citizen with the triple. Doesn't even take a single point of damage here. Continues to go on and needs to find two more. Has the opportunity to go for an ace here. Question, of course, is, is he gifted it? Well, that drone gets taken out by Ranchero, and that's going to be potentially someone else for Citizen to move in towards. And they still have an entire double down on the man advantage, and Bride still doesn't have a single kill or a connection for the game as of yet. Now's the perfect time for that stat to start to change. There's still four players that are dedicated to trying to lock you out. But again, this is when G2 starts to slow sometimes, regardless of the man advantage that they've had. We've seen them struggle in a similar man advantage before. It was a 5-2 that turned into almost a BDS round before. Now let's see if BDS can try and replicate that, try and bring some solidity. Yonka slips on by. He's able to find their way into the close connection here on the servers and the archives side even. And as that gets opened up, they're still just drone checking, but now that 50 seconds has turned to 20 very quickly. They're going to open up just by this mute jammer, and Bride is in a position to try and lock it off. 15 seconds, and oh, no, the what feet, are you doing? and that gets dropped, and Bride finds his opener, and that is the diffuser quickly picked up and changed sticks. They're going to see if they can get the connection, and it's Bride that locks it off with the shotgun popped off for one versus one. Can't find it, BDS! I don't know. Okay, I'm going to be a bit upset here with, with how G2 played out that round. They had a minute and a half left, and that one, there was two Mew Gemmers. One on the first two, one on the second two. With the new spherical changes, you can still open up in the middle of it. They didn't even need to open up with the Maverick there, create a hole that, uh, that they could pick up a kill from. Kayak was basically gifted away to BDS. As a result, the wall does not open up, and Breed A is allowed to play there. It's a big mistake from G2. That round was theirs to take, and they just gave it to BDS. All the warnings on the walls, you can say it however many times, and you can say this is the bit where G2 struggles, and then it happens. And as you said, it's just those little disconnects, those little moments of a roster that has so much potential and brilliance, but cannot quite find it at the moments that they need to. Cannot quite get it as that multifunctioning moving being and it suffers and is exploited by players and pop-off moments like that. Bride with a couple, and Renshiro with a backline. If Citizen had a great first game, Renshiro on a 10 to two is doing his best to match it. He's definitely doing his best there to, uh, to match that, just to uh, take away a bit of the momentum that Citizen is able to build, because don't forget, he managed to get three kills in that round. It was a 2v5 clutch, or 2v4 clutch rather, that came through in the end. And for some reason, G2 decided to wait a full minute before they deployed any heart breach gadgets or material on the wall, the quad wall that's out there into the kitchen. A take they clearly wanted to go from the start of the round. That just uh, confuses me a bit. But it is BDS that takes that lead for now. And we're going to see if they can continue to build on for it. Is Citizen again going to be able to get that double entry he got before, for example? They, they definitely will need it. Well, they're putting some focus here down onto blue and they're going to burn out the ADSs here and see if they can catch the player that's just around the corner. That will destroy one of the ADSs. There's obviously still a disc a little bit further down and Rafal has the canisters to try and burn this if he wants to. He's utilized one. Sort of expected potentially a bit of a pacey rush there with the buck opening it up that fervently and that's why that early canister went through. Not really as a match to anything else other than maybe they're being quick and here it just buys him a little bit more control, a little bit more solidity now as he knows it's not going to be that aggressive. There is now also a disc and that's going to make sure that he's at least able to survive one more explosive but 
Clearing out the ADS is the big play, as that has its replen. Yeah, for sure, Dak. ADS is gone. There's still two of those magnets available, and as the hard reach this time does come through on time, there is going to be the opportunity for GT to try and work on the back of that. However, they need to be very careful. It's still a five on five. There's still plenty of denial left. A single smoke canister and 14 Shumika launchers. And as the last smoke canister is about to be popped, it's Rafael that surely will fall back as soon as that piece of cover is going to be gone. Henry looking to open up that hatch potentially. There's a little bit of damage done to Citizen as well on the other side of things. It's cheated that might actually go for a bit of an aggressive drop right here. That's the worry right now for Rafal, is as soon as this hatch is opened, he's in a position where he can't really swing out of there. So instead, they're going to see if they can swing onto him. A lot of explosives and a lot of explosions, but none that truly connect with the player. Hungary stood at the door, waiting for this, but with the shotgun and two other players just around the corner, there's going to be Maybe. one more play, and there it is. Dropped around, Rafal finds one, finds two, before the grenade is able to get the trade off, but it puts them in a bit of a tricky situation. Very well played there by Rafal, and to be fair, he's had these big moments throughout BDS is history and that could be another one that puts them in a tricky situation 40 seconds four more players to get through and they've got one behind the server stack now and it's a lems that's going to dig in corner to corner they're going to keep putting this pressure there's still shaiko to get through there's still tachanka flame grenades to get through there's still potentially a bubble that's going to zap them as soon as they try and go for a default plant with only 20 seconds they really don't have time to bait oh. or juggle this utility a misplay from breed a but he's able to at least pop one of those towards the far side once again they've got themselves on the hatch pressure, but they're going to have to dig deeper than a default here. They do not have the time to wait around and waste on this fire. The smoke's come through. The plant position comes out, and Kayak's going to see if he can stick it as the spray happens over the top and the shoulder. Now you expect BDS to try and apply some pressure here, and the push and the swing on the door itself. Shaiko gets the first. Shaiko doesn't get the second, but Bride sure does, and Citizen Round finds it and puts it into a one versus one. The verticality is what's currently in the favor of Renshiro, but with 30 seconds, they're going to take the drop, and Shaiko takes a round. Shaiko even it's citizen. citizen. <laughs> it's the English Shaiko. Is is the shadow of Shaiko as uh, Des called him? I I I don't think we uh, will continue that. Either way, it's G2 that will be walking away with that round. A lot of utility, a lot of manpower wasted on those blue stairs there. Eventually managed to get that kill, but not before a double swing with that English shotgun came about and was able to take out some of the G2 members. Shimeki Launcher really uh, hurting Bree Day at the start there. It might have been a key position because that really forced him out of his ideal position, allowed him to move through and get into a secondary plant position. We've discussed them, of course, at the start of the day, not for Bank necessarily, but in general. And now G2 tied up yet again, 4-4. Four to four. Whilst, I'm going to say it again, it should have been a 3-5 right now for G2. That first round they played on the attack, that should have been theirs, but it wasn't, unfortunately. Just like uh, the last round should have been BDS's, so uh, I guess they just traded them. Citizen going aggressive here, super important. Able to pick up that first and then lock it a second as well. You said it, like, Renshira has the advantage of the, of the verticality there, but current position of Citizen with the holes that have been created it was more of a disadvantage, really. And it was definitely Citizen. It was definitely Citizen. No, it's Shaiko. Shaiko, no. Shaiko no. didn't take the round. I literally had called <laughs> less than five seconds prior that Citizen had killed Shaiko. And yet, he took his identity sense. as a result. Yeah. He picked up the Jaeger helmet. Yeah. And maybe that's why the kills were so free. 4-4. Four, four. BDS and G2 back and forth and around we go and up we go to see yo proximities at the top of the stairs and the claw just on that side of the pillar to make sure it doesn't get caught by the grenades that might come through the second dug in on the elevator that's much more likely to get caught out and you know it's a very clever place of putting it because sure it's technically a little bit more obvious the one on the right wall if they're to find it but it's not going to get caught by the explosives that are generally going to find themselves towards that hatch, whatever yeah. happens. Those, uh, those grenades are often being tossed into elevator because there's often a player sitting there, right? So you might be able to catch off that electro claw. After this game, everybody will be aware, though, the second mm -hmm. electro claw, so that will be uh, hunted a little bit more aggressively after. But instead, the push doesn't really seem to be coming down from that way, and that might be a potential spot. They have it. Alem's position gets given away, and Virgil wants to open up, wants to get inside a stock, but all these long angles that have been created make it a little bit dangerous. 
Kayak's gonna see if he can try and get some cover for himself. Goes for the slow creep, so the spray through the smoke, as we hear going over the top of him, doesn't catch. He's able to slither and slink his way towards Janitor's door, and... Well, he almost strikes a little bit sharp do there it. and suffers. There's two of them and he can't quite find either. They seem both aware. The grenade from Citizen doesn't get the catch and neither does the hole opened up on the rotation. Ranchero's on the table, Rafael's on the floor and there's no one else forevermore. Virtue has the eyes on the diffuser, but they do not have any safety or comfort in terms of trying to recollect it. Oh, there goes a Lems. Caught off by Yonka covering the far side as Citizen wants to try and creep his way up the stairs, but he's concerned about the potential drop from the elevator hatch if there's still a player around that area. Don't forget the beepers as well. They will give away his position as soon as he does start moving up. And that sound cue might be enough for BDS to go for that small rotation to get that kill. Instead, he will be droned into the main stairs now. The proximity alarm does go off. They are aware of his position. And as he tries to take the gunfight, he does not have any grenades left to try and use the utility to his advantage. There's multiple angles he needs to cover off, though. Traces the C4 and gets the kill in time. But with 40 seconds left on the clock, G2, they need a bit more than that. They're going to try and cover themselves on the far side and see if they can swing around but Shaiko has the lockdown from the office and Bride has one more for the door now it is hungry on the windows and Yonka able to actually get another connection here but it's the two remaining players in 20 seconds They've been able to recollect the diffuser at this point, but they still don't have the clarity here of Janitors, and that's the big issue, because Renshiro in his power position can spray through, not for any longer. Shaiko, though, bites back. Any position he's in is seemingly a power position, and now it's Yonka to see if he can at least find a connection. Drops one, will have the call, looks for the second, only a handful of seconds, and not many more bullets. Isn't quite sure where the last player is, but Shaiko, he had that office locked down. He had it locked down for sure, was aware where he was, was listening to the sound carefully. And of course, with a down member, you have a, uh, well, a uh, dying drone, really, on your side that is giving away any information. But as a result, BDS now onto five rounds. G2, they need to make sure that they start fighting back or they keep up that pressure. Again, a very close round. It could have just as well gone G2's way, even though it was a bit of a stretch, of course. Yonka in that position, able to pick up those two kills. Quite important, but the third one, no information gathered on Shaiko. Was allowed to clutch it out. The Yings are coming through, though. Staff room and open area yet once more. See if this time around they will be quicker with the heart breach. Because that is truly, I'm going to say it again, lost in that round in round seven. It's lessons potentially learnt. And now's the demonstration of that. Now's the chance for G2 to try and put some of that down. And, you know, we've started to see a step up here. Before it was generally Renshiro as the only driving force for BDS. Since then, Shaiko has started to put a bit of a movement in. Rafal and Bride have had their moments as well. Alems is still not quite connecting with this game to the level he can do, but at the same time, from the positions and the intel that he drives, he's not always one that you expect to pop off in that sort of way. It changes generally day for day for BDS as to whether he's going to be at the top of the board or driving yeah. the team from behind. Yeah, for sure. For now, they are still winning this map, or at least in front. Need a single round left to make it to a map point. Of course, to potentially draw up the current scoreline to 1-1. One, one. As G2 already won that first map, it's not for the complete win of the series yet. Of course, last year they were eliminated by G2 in those grand finals. Back then came through to a toe shot that Fortune managed to hit in map one. Theme Park, one player of the year as well. BDS want to make sure that they don't end up in a similar situation again where uh, a player of the year was against them. <laughs> Citizen trying to find their way through. And as we said before, last time he opened this up with a double, and this time he's driven himself right underneath. He's gone to see if he can find the exploit in the hold, and the holes inside of it itself as he finds himself stacked up in archives. He's gonna maybe wait, lie, and try and apply some pressure before he tries with the grenades underneath. Hungry in the meantime is going to drive through, and there it is. Rafal's caught, and this will be the call to Alems, you assume, above, who's going to sort of say, well, we've lost a bit of the control underneath. And the fight comes through. Hungry finds Renchiro on the hop out, and now, once again, G2 has the body balance, but once again, they still have to try and find themselves through the site. Hey, look at this. The thing that you requested is happening wow. <laughs> much sooner. The hard destruction is actually going to make its way through onto the site itself. They knew look it's scarpered it. it and up as well. before, and that's it. Full open on the far side. 
it's, it's not like I've told you so, but <laughs> it kind of did. Either way, Lem's taking a small bit of damage right now as a result from that because they're uh, basically being pushed out of their current positions. Citizen is looking to take the gunfight here to Brie Day, but doesn't quite have the angle as Brie Day is waiting shortly and closely. Remember, inside a janitor, LMs is going to be crucial here. That doesn't allow Citizen to move through. They need to get that kill to start pushing. But as the kills are coming through right now, it's only up to Bree Day now, who is still hiding close. Gives away his position as he takes the gunfight. Smoke canisters are being tossed out as Candelas are coming in as well. Catches off Virtue as he drops through the hatch. But a 1v4 situation, completely blind, is being won here by G2. I was going to say, if you can't see anything, you're probably not going to survive the entire team flooding onto you. He took the first fight in the scrap and it didn't seem like they entirely knew where he was they thought he might be above which is where we saw that grenade sort of running yeah. to at that point and that's why the buck virtue was in that position as well to push janitors then the call came and then suddenly the cacophony of blinds flashes and everything including probably the kitchen sink because they made their way past kitchen to try and find the kill itself they locked it off and put it to five five we are back and forth on this half g2 they were, I mean, able to keep reapplying the pressure. And the moments that they're able to sort of lead into this, it looks like they have this connection. Yep. But then from that point onwards, we're still sort of waiting for, I guess, that solidity, which they haven't really been able to thread two rounds in a row apart from once throughout this game. I feel like we are getting uh, underway again. The pass came through from our observer. And kind of tweeted, uh, qu not tweeted. Tweeted. In instantly typed. G2 fine. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like, it's not us. Uh, so uh, a bit of a pause going on just to quickly fix something. Either way, staff, open area. Again, on the board here, BDS trying to run it back. This time, it will be the Electroclaw to be used rather than the Mute, I would hope. That does make sure that this wall does stay closed because as I, you know, I, I told, you, uh, told you round seven and it was portrayed in the previous one, it will open up with the Mute Gemmers if you place it in the right place. Will not be the case, of course, with the Electro Claws, which are currently being brought. You need to get rid of those. Of course, there's a bit of soft, uh, soft wall right, left, right above it, so you can open up, get a grenade over and get rid of them. Still open up as a result. But not quite sure if Brie Day is going for that play or if he will try and trick it with the Electro Claw. G2, can you thread two rounds together here? Can you try and go a little bit of a distance that you haven't quite been able to connect before so far? And I guess the response comes through here from BDS. They've sort of, as you said, brought a little bit more to stop yep. the onslaught on that wall. They have the pocket utility. They also have some healing kits available to them. I'm curious to see if we get the full extension up top as well in the roam play that they've had a little bit of before. They've played around with the idea of Vigil. They've played around with some of these operators, but instead now they've got what seems like and feels like a little bit more of a lockdown. Sure, the alibi is going to be out and about and trying to cause some problems of Alems on the far side, but you kind of hope, if you're a BDS fan, that we see Alems cause some problems because he hasn't really been able to connect yeah. with the early firefights like he often does. He will have to. He will have to make sure that at least a lot of time is being wasted on that top floor because it seems to be uh, an issue later on in the round, especially when, uh, well, he, there he is. He gets the first kill. Not quite sure where that came from, but it's going to be Kayak that gets taken out. It's the heart breach that would be crucial to open up that quad wall, which will not happen now. Uh, doubt that Yonka is going to be using his uh, his torches for it. Well, they've got the reveal that there's a player up top, and as you said, they've lost that heart destruction, and they're going to see if they can reformulate themselves. It's had to come to a big pull up sticks here of G2 as they've entirely refocus their attacks and they're trying to pinch this player. Citizen's been able to sneak his way in. They're going to see if they can get the drift as the pings come through on that player. There's nobody that's instantly trying to offer some support as the Candelas pop off, but so does Alems and there's Hungry with some revenge, but still as I said, that's a game Alems hasn't really been able to connect with before and here, most importantly, he's been able to find some of that pace and momentum. The body balance is in BDS's favor and he's removed Citizen and Hard Destruction. It's a great moment for that team captain. That's it. Managed to get two crucial kills here, which should be able to help BDS to rise up to the map point and potentially push ourselves towards a third. Now, grenade is being used to open up that hatch just to put down a little bit of pressure. In the meantime, Junka is rotating around already towards that quad wall. We'll be opening up close again, a bit of a line of sight. We'll be watched, of course, to potentially counter any form of uh, aggression that comes in from the side of BDS. This time also no rotation actually towards the archives. 
Prince Shira with the Maestro on the far side and Virtue with the drop on Rafal. They had the sneak and played the idea of Yonka putting the pressure on first. And now they're going to see if they can pick up the second player. Dropping open the kitchen and angling themselves towards that plant on that far side, but 30 seconds. And this is when things get a little bit shaky for G2. The trade of the diffuser and the push round, but it's a back line of BDS gunners that they're going to have to meet. And that bubble is giving absolutely everything away. And they don't need to open it. It is playing this Intel game as the Candelas go out far and the smokes go close. They're going to see if they can cover themselves a bit of momentum here and blind absolutely everything, but that's not going to stop the swing round. Shaiko's going to see if they can make the connection and Virtue is going to lock off the first fight. Can't find it. They're going for the pings. The sprays across the board and there it is over the top. Bride with two. One more for Shaiko and the bubble locks it off. The bubble definitely gives away a lot of information there and took the attention away, which basically didn't allow them to go for the gunfights in the end. And that forces or puts BDS up onto map point here. Just a single one left and we're heading towards map number three. That will be their goal as G2 is looking to fight back, looking to bounce back the fuse. Um, it can go through these hatches and get rid of a lot of utility. And potentially even the server player, the server stack player. If it bounces the right way, you might be able to put up the pressure there. So. There is, uh, there is definitely some capabilities here with that fuse. It's an operator that, of course, had a small rework where the uh, cluster charge can now go through um, reinforcements rather than just soft flooring before, uh, which does make it a little bit, you know, vulnerable. There is a lot of sound being given away beforehand, but at least it gives you something to do if these hatches are closed off, especially on sites like this. Okay, so BDS, one more hold, one more chance for one more map, or G2, one more round, and you get another chance, another chance of being able to close this off at two. And it's going to start here, obviously, as we said, with a bit of eyes onto a fuse. It's a bit of a play. There's a few operators. Imagine, imagine about, not even a year ago, six months ago, and saying this round is going to have a Warden, a Tachanka, and a Fuse. Yeah. And it's going to be like an actual round yeah I, I, I know I think people will be like what like what are you doing like what league are you spectating in that case um, it's, it's just gonna be the European League now and as the first hatch does get opened up it provides an opportunity to stop any rotations back from the server side now that will be watched or could be watched and after that you can potentially see the fuse charge to be deployed on the servers um, hatch, the server stack hatch, to potentially flush out any of the remaining members. If you have control of the top four first, of course. They're stacking themselves up to see if they can get a catch on anybody that might be close. And Well, they haven't found any BDS players. BDS isn't overexerting themselves. They're not overextending. They're sort of locked in on a bit of an angle and an impression here as the drones filter their way through. Blue is clear. There's nobody they can get from that hatch. There's no cheeky pick behind the server stack, so Virtue's going to drive themselves down. It's a lot of ground that's being handed over to G2, and in a way, sort of takes away from what the Fuse might have been able to offer here. Kayak's going to open up the default, and they might swing themselves through to the plant. They slip by, and Virtue's now on the opposite side, so they can try and get a little bit of a split push here. But with a lot of the groundwork done, it's still questions of where are G2 going to deploy? Deploy. There it That's goes. Exactly it. Just over the top there. Shaiko pulls himself a little bit further back, and Virtue's going to set up the drone. They've placed it. Now they're going to hold it for now as Shaiko waits for just some of this gadgetry to pop off. The spray comes through. He doesn't quite get the connection that he wants, and it's able to take care of a lot of utility as Kayak suffers from the Tachanka on the door of the entrance. Yeah, so the Shumikas are being launched in. Now they need to get rid of that or push towards a secondary plant position, but they cannot do that as long as these uh, cluster charges continue to go off and as long as Shago has a line of sight. Now that one has been blocked out. It's Alemza tries and go aggressive and will find a kill, but he gets traded out by Citizen, who goes for a second and gets it down into Rafal as well. 45 seconds soon on the board. Yonka goes for the stick and Hungry gets Shaiko over the meantime and now they've been able to find one more Citizen over the what top and it's Citizen locking it off either side. OT is where we go. I'm not sure if that was just the quad kill or if that got close to an ace right there, but Citizen, what a round that was. Just jumping in right there, shooting them down one by one by one and that pushes us to overtime now with G2 on that attack. And... I think G2 honestly has been better on their attack than their defense so far. It's just these small mistakes in the end which have cost them two rounds.
out of the six they have played. They could have locked it off already, but now they get the opportunity to properly do that. The fuse again to come through. Staff room and open area. There is tons of soft flooring to potentially use that on, but the six pick comes in. As the mute changes to a Cade, it is going to be the Selmas of Ace that be, are being brought out. Now, you're not going to be able to use those on the Electrified wall. You have to get rid of the Electro class first, which is, of course, doable with just that frag grenade over the top. That evil eye again, by the way. I mean, it played its role. It, it played, played its it role perfectly. Because what we've seen across a couple of the different sides here is that G2 has played against Smokes. They've played with Candelas. They have the multi-tool that is hungry. The man that That's it. can pick up pretty much any operator. And that is such a perfect thing for a roster. I reckon he just has a dice to where Chess rolls it and then... That's it. And there's not many players in the world that you can sort of say, we need somebody to play this. And he's like, yeah, I can... Yeah, uh, I can do that. And literally, the list of operators that we see him not only play, but play well as well. Even today, we've yeah. seen him on the Monty and the Candelas to try and be the entrance, the pick of the <laughs> fuse there, and now the ace. It is just an absolute multi tool of a player. And here, let's see if they can try and find it to open up. <sighs> Maybe the start of the final take. Now, keep in mind, Fuse is not really an operator that is um, known to kill a lot of people in pro play. It is just to get rid of a lot of utilities, such as Evil Eyes, Barbed Wire, Shields, anything you can really imagine, uh, because there are, of course, all explosives. Now, G2 looking to enter quickly on that top floor. There is still going to be that player. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Lems again. Yeah, same setup, same shield, same alibi, Prismas. This time he's trying to go a bit aggressive onto the door right here, using that 1.5 on the MX4 Storm, but his position has been given away, so he has to be very careful now. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the record is in terms of kills on an engagement, but I will say Citizen is currently on 40 across these opening two maps so far, and, well, he might be about to be on 41. He, he is the drop go, and he can't quite get the connection that he wants as they find their way out, and... They don't sit around, they don't wait for the push. In fact, they take the next one as well. He's done his role, Alems, and he's going to pull himself back this time instead of sitting around and suffering as he's done a couple of times before. It's a big blow and an important one once again to be able to take out a player there. The buck's gone. That's going to mean the free movement that you often like to exert on here, on this map where you need a lot open, isn't going to quite be open because look at the changes here from BDS. They haven't got archives open. They're instead oh. playing themselves a little bit further away. A lot of damage done onto Alems right there, who quickly wanted to challenge. That's the angle to watch the top of blue was being opened up. Almost uh, doesn't escape from that with his life. Meantime, Junker ready in a position where he could go for a potential opening. Explosives are still going on. Strong, though, needs to be careful for the main stairs. There is players out there. They are waiting. They're hoping to go aggressive. And as these grenades are being tossed out, that is surely a call sign here for Rafal that someone is getting quite close. Rafal is going to see if they can lock it off, but again, this slightly different hold here from BDS is sort of putting G2 in a bit of a tricky situation. They're unfortunately stumbling, as they often like to do. As Citizen, as I said, this was cold before, but now he's going to have to open rotations of his own. But there's still the concern of the players underneath. There's still the concern of the players on the roam and the movement. He hears a bit of shuffling, but he doesn't quite get the connection that he wants here. With two grenades in pocket, the ping's going to come through, and the spray is just a little bit too high for the slow creep of the player. There's a shotgun just around the corner here that Kayak can't quite get past without some convincing. They're going to see if they can smoke off the movement, and the cover comes through. One more smoke canister in 15 seconds, and suddenly it's Citizen with a grenade, and the go, 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 as they drive themselves to the back, break the camera, and see if they can stick it on the far side. But it's got to be a bit of a lockdown here. Bride tries to go for some movement. Hungry has the lockdown. Yonko with one more, and Citizen with a backline G2. It's down to Shaiko, and he's able to get the opening too. But with the two players left on the corner, they're able to slip their way out. They've got a bit of a cross fight and a fire either side. He finds one no more. Way, Can he get the last? It's a spray through over the top. He gets, he gets it. Shaiko with a 4K to match the performance of Citizen the round before. Neither an ace, but both just as exceptional. Not like this. G2, a 1v4 round tossed into the bin. After they all tried to go quickly onto Shaiko. Now, I think there was <laughs> the first two I can understand. The first one definitely. Then Citizen wanted to go for the clean up there as he needed to make that 180 flick. Successfully did so. Finds two more in the end. And BDS, they run away with it.
Of course, they had the advantage throughout the round. There was a player onto the main stairs who had the opportunity to lock him off as they ran past, but instead, G2 aggressed. G2 pushed through, went for the plant. The cover was there on every single member of BDS but Shaiko, who clutches it off and puts BDS into a map point position yet once again. A position they shouldn't have been in right now. Attackers need to locate and bomb. Little mistakes. It's, it's the little mistakes. I mean, little that's, mistakes. The, that's the third attacking round that G2 should have won, but that they've lost due to either their own mistakes or the clutch potential on a player of BDS. Now, Shaiko, he sees Citizen on 19 kills and he's like, well, I've got to try and at least even that one out, but... Okay, so... Plant goes down. I understand this kid. Well, I, I kind of also don't understand why you go for the jump in there. I understand why Citizen dies, but these last two kills as well. Probably better to just uh, stay put, dig in deep, let him come to you. He used his C4 at the start of the round. But now G2 need to bring it back. They need to win this defensive round on the lockers. Now they have successfully done so, I believe, twice out of the two times they've played it. But there's still going to be that bit of pressure now. Ooh, it's tricky. It's tricky and it's frustrating because that's one of the things that's going to get in G2's head. Is they know how close they are. They know that it was a four versus yeah. one. They know it was a post plant and they know it was theirs. And sure, a player popped off and Shaiko made some excellent swings there. And a lot of other players in that situation would have died on the first engagement after getting that opening kill. Being able to then snap to or close enough to, and then find the pick on Citizen afterwards. From that point on, was able to somehow isolate two one versus ones in the remaining showdown. It was all exceptional, but it was G2's entirely. One slight difference there, one slight difference in positioning. It would have been their round. It would have been the setup here for them to take the map. It would have been them in the final. It would have been them in the grand final already locked through, yes. But it won't be yet. Just a little bit deeper into the hallway, just hiding that corner. Wait for him to push around and trust on Kayak's calls. Either way, BDS, they live for now. It's on the back of Shaiko, and they need to go for another approach. This time, the vault gets electrified. So G2 not really wanting to deal with someone coming from the back. And I believe Virtue, no, he's not, he's not trying to recover that one. It's just leaving it in there. Will be the opening from Bride. Potential impact, potentially, no, nope, not going to happen. As LMS continues to open up here, but that could be natural C4 to come through. A lot of damage onto LMS. That's it. Virtue decided to see if he can offer some aggression back towards the player, but couldn't quite get the connection. And Citizen is going to see if he can do the same here. Waiting for somebody to try and make friends with this hatch, but the drone is actually going to be what comes through first. And there it is, revealed and pulled back. Luckily, he caught it before he got caught himself here. They're waiting to see if they can just get the catch and the bite on the first player. It's Renshiro, though, takes care of Hungary, leans into the smoke canister, and, well, that is a huge bout of aggression and play that's been able to really open up a side here. BDS, they're going for the take that they haven't done before across the opposite side, and Virtue's the next to suffer as suddenly the French bodies drop their way into the server stack itself. The drone is leading its way across the top as Kayak's in a position to pop, 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 but it's Citizen that bites and almost gets bit back. Renshiro suffers next, but... The Sledge has already been able to do a huge amount of work here. And as the wall for the default gets popped open, Citizen's not quite sure on where he wants to lean in because both hatches are being watched. The smoke canister drops a little bit of cover here. They're going to see if they can lean the backpack in and go for the plant. The call comes through, but there's a man on the hatch. Sprays through and Shaiko gets one and Citizen no gets way, one, Citizen. And one more and somehow finds his way out of there. And now it's a two versus one. Bride's on the floor. They're not going to be able to get him back up. Rafal is trying to find some cover. A fantastic flank around one side. But this has suddenly turned into the Citizen and Shaiko show. Honestly. And they just keep stepping up. I know, you know, we need to make the top five plays after every every play day. Um, round 12, round 13, <laughs> round 14 so far. I think I yeah, think we're pretty much set. It's going to make the editing very easy. It's going to make it very easy. Just load up one of these <laughs> games. Oh, man. And G2, they... Okay, so now they're two men down. They bring it back due to Citizen just swinging the man on the hatch, getting that kill, and instantly getting the down onto Bride as well. And instead of over-pushing at that point, rotates back around just to let them come to you. And that pushes us 
to 7-7 seven, seven now. G2 have a match point here. So do BDS. But if G2 win this one, it will be Dem in the Grand Finals. And Dem yet again eliminating BDS during a European League final. Again, not entirely sure off the top of my head what the kill record is for a best of three. I think it's 47. He's on 46 right now. I think it's 47. I think that's what Yas managed to reach during the Sweden Major. 47 kills, he equaled the record. Map two, Citizen is on 46. Might not even need a map three for it. Uh, he's definitely gonna break it at this point. There, there's if, no if way If they go to a third map, it's his record. Yes. Absolutely carrying G2 through that last round and round 12. Yonka as well though, 14 kills, hungry on 11 currently. To really starting to uh, to liven up here. Their attacks, they have been strong, but mistakes have cost them three of them. Three of the rounds that could have already made them be locked out now. Now's the time for no mistakes, G2. Now's the time for one final approach. And BDS, the same is in your favor. You know you've not connected with this game the way that you wanted to. And to be fair, it's G2's map, but it's a map that you know very, very well. And you're a team that couldn't quite connect on yours either. You have one opportunity to keep yourselves fighting for the first or second place in this competition. And at least guarantee yourself one of those two. And here it is. Citizen on the big window. He's going to see if he can get a swing around. There is a player that's Whoa, just popped on popped the top. It. And ooh, cannot quite find the connection here. Lems once again is looking to lean into this aggression game. And it's been a bit hit and miss. But when it hits, it hits hard. And he's still ready to try and he can take another swing. Citizen seems to be well aware. He's holding the angle now. If he stands up, he's being caught off. But as Kento gets opened up, that forces the Lems to fall off that current position. They now have the long line of sight all the way through that hallway. But as G2 is major, like the majority of them are downstairs. They might be pushing up the spiral and the main at the same time because the other push, well, it works out sometimes, but not quite to the extent they want. Also, the guns of BDS are currently aimed in that position as well. And look at the Lems down in stock. Has the opportunity to rotate out if he needs to. He really wants to as well. He's toying with the idea. You could see him see if he could bait some movement underneath with the footsteps and try and pull into a fight. But instead, he's gone to lock it off for now because there's still a lot of time. And this is one of the things that we've said is sometimes when these rounds go for a long time without anybody finding anybody, it often goes the BDS way, especially when G2's on the attack. Here, they are making sure that they don't make a mistake, but you've still got to see if you can try and lean into it. Yeah. Barely any time left though, 55 seconds. And what have they got? Absolutely nothing. They now only start to push up these spiral stairs. They will have to do so quickly. Grenades are being tossed in. They need these first two kills, Emmy. Well, the grenades go around either side. They're able to try and put some pressure here. The smoke canister covers it, but it's Renshiro and a little bit of accidental fight on Renshiro. Renshiro and Bride keep BDS chugging along. Yonker on the far side is able to find one. It comes back round against them now, and that's Kayak. He slipped his way inside the site, is able to pick up a freebie because of it and takes care of the bulletproof. But those castles mean either side is about to become a pretty bit of fight. We are going to map three. And again, it should have been locked out by G2 a long time ago during this game, but just the amount of clutches we have seen in the last three of the four rounds have been amazing. Shaikoda eventually takes that MVP out. <laughs> and BDS, well, they do survive for now on the back of some small errors. That's it. It could have been a...